Hey everyone, this is Annalisa from People's Climate Movement. We are live right now for our national call about rise for climate jobs and justice on September 8th. Uh, I just wanted to quickly go over a little bit of housekeeping before we start uh, formally in just a few minutes. Wanted to make sure people know we are recording this webinar. So please make sure that you are muting your lines and uh, we can ensure that we can have really good sound quality for the rest of the call. Um, we're also going to be sending out the recording and the follow-up. So if you have friends or family or neighbors or community partners that also want to be a part of Rise for Climate Jobs and Justice, no worries if they couldn't make the call, they can check it out um, online later. So if you are in the call right now, please feel free to chat with us. We're super excited to have you tonight. Please go ahead and type into the chat box if you are on a laptop or a computer or have the ability to get into the chat box your name, the organization that you're affiliated with, if any. Um, if you have a preferred gender pronoun you'd like to share, feel free to type that in as well and share your location. I am currently streaming from the Bronx in New York. Um, so super excited to be with you all tonight. So again, um, I'm going to go ahead and drop what we're asking you all to introduce yourselves with into the chat box. Name, org affiliation, if any, preferred gender pronoun, and location. And if you just have something really exciting and inspiring to share, feel free to do that as well. We'll be monitoring the chat box throughout this call. If you have any questions, um, feel free to type them into the chat box. Um, for folks on the phone, we really appreciate your patience as we manage phone and chat boxes here. Um, we are going to be making sure that your questions get answered um, and any follow-up emails, you can feel free to reply to our follow-up email when we send it out. So thanks again to everyone for joining. I'm seeing all the chat start to pop in. We're gonna start in just a couple minutes. Looks like we got some folks from Washington, Pennsylvania, California, that's my home state, uh, Minnesota, another person from New York, hey, what's going on in New York? Colorado, New Jersey, um, Washington DC, the district, Massachusetts, oh, Stockton, California, that's also very close to my hometown. Um, really, really excited to have you all here. Illinois, another folk from Boston, Maryland, Texas. This is amazing. Thank you all so much for putting all your time and energy to be with us tonight. Um, again, reminder as folks are jumping on the phone and jumping on the laptop, please leave yourselves. Do your best to limit our background noise. We will be recording, so please note that. We're taking notes tonight. We'll share the slide deck. We'll share the recording out with everybody. So make sure that you are tuned in as much as possible. And if for whatever reason you need to step away, we'll have all the information ready for you all. Virginia, folks from Virginia are joining us. Another Texan, more Californians. Super excited, Ohioans. Beautiful. Uh, someone had a tech question. How do you meet yourself on a laptop? Emily, can you respond to that? Yes, so everyone um, actually if you're not a panelist you are automatically muted by default. So um, During the Q&A we might bring some folks off mute, but for now you're all good Awesome. Sweet. Thanks so much. So let's get ready to get started. Um, I really appreciate everybody for being online again. I am again Annalisa. I'm PCM's campaign coordinator for 2018. Really, really thankful that you're making time um, amidst so many other commitments, so many things going on, I'm sure, in your families, in your hometowns, your home states. We really, really appreciate you being a part of this movement because we cannot do it without you. Um, I want to again remind you to please use the chat box to use questions, drop in questions, share any stories, continue sharing your locations, your names, and your organizations hopes, wishes, and dreams um, for this week and for Rise for Climate Jobs and Justice. Lindsay, our organizing director, will answer those questions as they're coming in. 
and we'll also have a Q&A section in this agenda tonight. Um, so tonight we're really here to again make sure that we're checking with our, our folks around Rise for Climate Jobs and Justice, which is our big national mobilization this year for people's climate movement. Um, this is part of a larger organizing arc, but this day in particular has been in a really, really amazing effort by a ton of organizations from across the United States, um, as well as it's a large day for folks across the world. We have so many folks that are also a part of the Rise for Climate action that's a, the global initiative led by 350.org. Um, so we're really, really excited to have the many national partners who have built this work over the many years of PCM. It feels like longer, but it's been about four years since our inception. 350.org, as I mentioned, who's also hosting the Zoom call tonight. Thank you so much. SEIU, California Environmental Justice Alliance, Center for Popular Democracy, People's Action, CHISPA, League of Conservation Voters, Blue Green Alliance, Climate Justice Alliance, there's so many more orgs. Um, you're all important and we thank you so much for building out this day of action. It's been a huge process of strategy and planning um, and all the time and energy, sweat, blood and tears of the many staff and many volunteers and leaders and members of all these organizations. So thank you so much. And um, again, another huge thank you to our particular California partners who this year are holding down our anchor mobilization in the Bay, San Francisco. Um, CEHA, California Environmental Justice Alliance, I Don't Know More, APEN, Asian Pacific uh, Environmental Network, Poder, Jobs with Justice, San Francisco, and many more folks as well who have been really, really anchoring that work in such a powerful way and ensuring many folks from across the great state of California are all coming into the Bay for Rise for Climate Jobs and Justice. So we're really, really excited to hear about all this great work tonight. Um, I'm going to pass the mic over now to your facilitator for the rest of the evening. Drum roll, please. Please welcome Diane Enriquez. She is with Center for Popular Democracy. I'll let her further enter herself, but she'll be leading us through our agenda tonight, which as I mentioned, includes some question and answers and some highlights from some of our actions across the nation, California, Colorado, um, and many more states. So Diane, with that, I pass it over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Annalisa. Hi, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. I'm super excited about this really amazing call that we put together for you all. Um, a little bit about myself. I am uh, currently the Director of Campaigns for Community Dignity at the Center for Popular Democracy, which houses all of our climate work, our housing work, immigration, education, with the understanding that like all of these issues are really intersectional. And I think one of the things that's really powerful and like particularly uh, significant for me is that in the same vein, PCM is also equally intersectional and like really looking to bring in as many people into the fight um, and into the rise for climate justice jobs um, and, and racial equity. And so, you know, I have been involved with PCM and through other positions and as a participant uh, for since the first year. It's been something that's been really like significant and exciting for me personally because it got me into the climate justice movement. Um, and I think that that's what it's done and it's value add um, for so many thousands of other folks. And CPD has been involved as a partner organization for since the beginning as well. Um, our, our members who aren't traditional climate justice um, organizations have been at the center of the struggle because of their members. They organize people of color in low income communities. Um, and so they have been able to, they've, they've seen all of these things, um, how climate change has really impacted these communities um, and made them very vulnerable. So it's something that's really at the, at the core of our partners, it's the core of our communities, and it's definitely something that I think is really important. Um, and so I'm really excited to be a part of this, of this call and of this, of this movement. Um, Rise for Climate, Jobs and Justice builds out of the work of environmental justice, labor-based partners, like those that Annalisa listed, uh, and so many others at the national, state, and local level in the United States, and many many global organizations. So we have the opportunity on September 8th to move people to action who are hungry for community hope and a real climate and community wins. It's important to remember that we are movement building here, not just moment creating, and need to find alignment in our respective org's goals, organization's goals, and asks. 
as well as provide a pathway to C3 electoral work, such as voter registration, voter education, candidate and town halls, because we really need to focus on building, on continuing to build power together. And we have to keep showing up like folks did in DC over the weekend and work together with threatened communities to bring forth solutions. So with this in mind, I'm gonna pass it over to the PCM California leadership team who, ha who is leading the anchor action for the mobilization. Um, and I believe that's Antonio Diaz. Okay. Hi everyone, I'm Antonio Diaz. I'm with Poder, People Organizing to Demand Environmental and Economic Rights. We're an environmental justice organization here in San Francisco. And indeed, that's been mentioned, the uh, anchor action for September 8th for the Rise for Climate Jobs and Justice will be here, as, um, as we like to say, right in our front yard uh, in uh, downtown San Francisco. We're um, inviting everyone to come here to the city. We're organizing the biggest mobilization on climate ever on the West Coast. We're bringing in thousands of people to the streets of San Francisco to tell the uh, 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 sort of corporate representatives and elected leaders that are coming to the Governor's Global Climate Action Summit that we need real climate leadership now and we need to show them what real climate solutions are from the bottom up, the community-led solutions that we're working on day in and day out. And uh, we're also taking this opportunity to you know, really build our power collectively in a very intersectional way, as Diane mentioned, and continue organizing for the, the, the racial, economic, uh, climate justice uh, needs that our communities are demanding. So what we're going to do on, um, on September 8th, and folks are, are invited, as I said, to come to San Francisco to join us. Uh, Lindsay is actually going to uh, send in a follow-up newsletter the uh, address where folks can uh, RSVP. You can uh, indicate that you're uh, coming to join us here in San Francisco on the uh, morning of September 8th. We'll be, we'll be having actually buses from throughout the state of California. Folks are coming in from San Diego, from the Central Valley, from the Central Coast, from Sonoma, Napa, etc., from different parts of the, of the state to be here in San Francisco on that day. There's also actually a, a way to apply for a bus. So once again, the link for that will be sent out for all of you to, who are interested in, in doing that. But we'll be marching from the Embarcadero right under where the uh, Bay Bridge meets our fair city of San Francisco and walking towards the Civic Center. But by you know, thousands of folks representing the diversity of our movement with the uh, colorful, colorful banners and the art that are characteristic of PCM mobilizations. Uh, and when we get to the uh, Civic Center, We'll be having two things. One is what we're going to be doing with, uh, with uh, the support of uh, many organizations that have signed on and many others that we hope to recruit. We'll be doing the biggest street mural ever. We're actually uh, aiming for uh, breaking a world's record for the largest street mural uh, that will be done there at, at, on the streets of the Civic Center. We're asking organizations to, to sign up to do a street mural. We have over 40 organizations at this point, I believe, that have signed up and are wanting to get uh, others to, to share you know, their solutions of what real climate uh, uh, leadership looks like artistically. So we definitely want folks to, to step up for that. And we're also hosting a resource fair. We wanna share information about what we're doing around in our communities, uh, around the issues of uh, uh, climate, economic, and racial and social justice, and you know, groups can apply for for tables to to be, to be at that uh, at that resource fair. So, want to put an invite for that. Once again, a link is going to go out about how groups can um, can apply for a, for for a table at the resource fair. Uh, so, it's going to be an exciting uh, day in San Francisco. Going to be kicking off a week of action uh, around climate uh, jobs and justice. And we invite all of you to, to join us. I think uh, in closing, I would just need to say that I think we're very, very clear that we want us, that it's important for us to send this loud message um, for the folks that are gonna be rolling into San Francisco later on in the week, that uh, we need real climate leadership now. And we need to also demonstrate that I say, what the people powered solutions really look like for, for climate leadership. And we're gonna be showing that, we're gonna be demonstrating that, we're gonna be lifting our voices to to, to, so that we can be heard. But also what we want is to this be a moment of uh, momentum building 
because we also need to take action, you know, whether it's at the ballot box in November or organizing for the real climate solutions, the community-led solutions, the just transition that we're all doing every, every day, day in and day out. We need to demonstrate that that's the power that we're building and, and demonstrate it on the streets of San Francisco. So I welcome everyone to join us and adelante mi gente. Thanks. Thank you, Antonio. Um, and, and thank you to the California leadership team, team for all the great work. So we're gonna be pausing briefly for some questions. Um, folks have been asking questions and we've been monitoring them in the chat box. Um, and I wanna thank again, thank, thank all of the participants. Um, I, I feel like we've been having some really great questions. Um, and I'm just gonna read some of them. And also for those of you, um, if participants would like to take the chat offline, you guys can check out the hashtags Rise for Climate and Why We Rise to see organizations and individuals that are also taking part in the mobilization. Um, and if folks have, if participants have some local stories that they want to share out, uh, please fill out PCM Story Capture. It's a form that Lindsay will be dropping into the chat box soon. Um, and it'll be included in the follow up email as well. So let me just take a look here. Um, so yeah, so we've got a bunch of questions. Um, and I will, so how will the march be communicated to GCAS? as they are meeting several days after the march. So does anyone have an answer to that? Well, I, yeah, I mean, I, I would, a couple of things. One is I would say that part of the, um, the uh, momentum that we're building and why we want to have a powerful um, mobilization uh, in March on the 8th is that we want to set the tone for what's going to happen later on in the week. I think we, we want to build that narrative about what real climate leadership looks like, what real climate solutions from the grassroots look like, and have that be part of the, uh, the, the discourse leading up, to the, um, leading up to the GCAS itself. I mean, there's also opportunities, and someone's going to talk about this later on, is that after the 8th of September, the It Takes Roots Alliance is also hosting a week of activities. So, so actually the 8th, is really the, the kickstart of week-long activities that are happening in San Francisco, um, building towards the beginning of the GCAS. So I think that there's ways in which we are uh, reiterating, reiterating our message and really carry, carrying forward what we're sort of um, kind of putting the, uh, the, 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 the forceful first statement on, on the 8th. I mean, secondly, also, uh, there is being worked out, uh, details are being work, worked out on, in terms of having an inside outside strategy uh, that's uh, to be developed, but I think that there's ways that we're we're discussing these things so that uh, we make sure that what what starts on Saturday, September eighth, carries through till the end of the GCAS later on that uh, that following week. Great. Um, so another question here says, when will locations of marches in other cities be known? For example, Los Angeles still says TPD online. I can go ahead and answer that question. Um, thanks, folks. So yeah, you're probably looking at maps on um, from our Action Network RCP sites. Uh, we've been working with our hosts to make sure that their actions are filled out as clearly as possible um, across the nation and globally as well. I wanted uh, maybe also pass it over or just like quickly hear from Antonio as far as making sure that people are clear about for California folks because it is a particular um, state as the anchor action state this year. We're really encouraging folks to do what they can to get up to the Bay Area if at all possible, especially if you have a group going with you. Um, and if you're looking for other information about state specific um, actions, uh, if you go ahead and add yourself um, to the action network itself, if you RSVP to the specific action that you're going to, it'll put you on an email list and that'll allow the hosts of that action to be in touch with you directly from email, um, potentially from your phone if their action network forms capture that phone number. Um, but if you also have any other questions about 
state specific actions, again, particularly outside of California, for whatever reason, if there's not clear enough information online, it's definitely another push for our hosts. We had a call last week ensuring that they're getting all their information up online. So it's another push again for any hosts online. Make sure your, your action network, your Facebook pages are fully updated um, as folks are really, really eager to RSVP. But bottom line, RSVP to the action network events in the map. You can just go to peoplesclimate.org, take action, um, scroll down and type in your zip code and your action near you will pop up. Great, thank you. So folks, keep asking questions in the chat box um, and we'll make sure to get answers to you as quickly as possible. Um, but now we'll hear an update from another core partner, 350.org in Colorado and their executive director, Micah. Hello, can you hear me okay? Yep. Great. Um, well, thanks so much for having me on. Again, I'm Micah Park and I'm the executive director of 350 Colorado. Um, first, I want to acknowledge that our featured Colorado Rise action is being organized by the Colorado Climate Justice Table, which is made up of our organization, 350 Colorado, along with Colorado People's Alliance, SEIU Local 105, AFL-CIO, Green Faith, Conservation Colorado, Sierra Club, Earth Guardians, Denver Area Labor Federation and Clean Energy Action. So um, just to tell you a little bit about it, on September 8th, we're excited to rise for climate justice and join the national mobilization to demand a clean, renewable energy future that protects communities most impacted by climate change and pollution, and we'll be working to lift up the voices of workers and communities of color. We're hosting a large climate jobs and justice summit, followed by a candidate forum with gubernatorial and other state level candidates to get them on the record on these issues that we all care about. So during the summit, we'll hear from panelists on labor, faith, youth, climate groups, and communities of color, including people who are most directly impacted by climate change and pollution here in Colorado. We'll have workshops to learn about the different ways that we can collectively act to move us into a just and equitable transition to a 100% clean renewable energy future. And just to give you a taste, some of the workshop sessions include things like dance and music as resistance, adaptation, migration and justice, defunding climate disaster, centering workers in the movement for climate justice, and protecting frontline communities from fracking, which is a huge issue here in Colorado. Um, and that last workshop will be about how people can plug into an exciting campaign win that the movement just had here in Colorado last week that I want to take just a second to share a bit more about as inspiration, just to show what we can all accomplish when we all come together. Statewide, over 80 endorsing organizations and over 750 volunteers work to collect over 171 signatures to place an initiative on this November's ballot that will increase safety setbacks between oil and gas fracking and frontline communities, homes, schools, playgrounds, and water sources, and it will increase it to 2,500 feet. So for anyone who caught the New York Times article a couple of Thursdays ago, this campaign has been riddled with efforts by the industry to undermine it, from harassment of our signature gatherers directly, to theft of 15,000 signatures, to buyouts of firms that we're working with, and they've raised over $15 million to oppose us so far. Nevertheless, the people prevailed last Monday, and we, we needed 98,000 signatures to get on the statewide ballot, and we turned in 171,000 signatures. So this just shows how people power can triumph over industry corruption when we all come together. So hope that provides a little inspiration and um, I'll stop there and thank you all so much for everything you're doing and the work together for climate jobs and justice. Thank you so much, Micah. That's super inspiring to hear about all the work that you guys are doing. Um, and next we'll hear from a couple of other uh, core partners. Sabrina with the Partnership for Working Families and Mackenzie from Jobs with Justice who will share about their network's investment in climate and the September 8th action. Hi, I'm Sabrina Owens Wilson. I'm a campaign director at the Partnership for Working Families um, and I'm based in the Denver metro area, also in Colorado. Um, but we are um, a national network of grassroots organizations located in um, 19 major metro areas around the country fighting for a vision of just, um, sustainable, and democratic cities. Um, and we're doing this by restructuring the economy to address inequality, reshaping our built environment to improve the health of workers, communities, and the planet, and reclaiming our democracy by organizing workers and communities to build power. 
Um, you might be familiar with our work on community benefits agreements or um, good jobs policies on like construction careers or raising the minimum wage. Um, we've always really worked at the intersection of race and the economy and at times um, the environment as well. But climate justice has really become um, a critical part of our work because at a time when a lot of the equity focused gains that we've made um, over the last couple of decades are under attack, climate just or the climate crisis really poses a big threat to the progress that we've made. We can raise wages, but as we've seen in New Orleans and New York, um, those winds can be wiped out. And a lot of those devastating um, climate disasters have um, really sh shown a light on the depths of the inequality that exists in our communities. And so for us, our climate justice work is really about um, addressing the need to um, reduce greenhouse gases, but also um, really um, addressing the underlying structural issues of institutional racism, deep economic inequality, and corporate greed that's baked into our economy. And so our network's really fighting to build um, a green, a clean energy transition that really transforms and builds a new economy that's powered by um, clean energy, that's built on justice, and is centered around our most valuable resources, which are actually our people and our planet. And so as a part of our We Make the City campaign, um, which aims to win the systems and structures people need to live full and healthy lives, um, we have campaigns on a number of climate issues. On energy in particular, we have campaigns in Los Angeles, New York, Washington State, Philadelphia, and Boston that are working on city and state level policy um, and campaigns to really um, win the transformation that we need. Um, and this is about expanding clean energy sources, about um, winning good jobs for people that um, are good a good wage and our union, and also are about building community wealth um, and sustaining the planet. Um, and then experimenting with models of community ownership that really maximize democratic control over our energy sources. And so we're really excited about the People's Climate Movement because um, you know coalition work is core to um, our model and, and how we work in the different communities that we're located in. Um, and PCM is really a place where um, we can come together and have some of the tough conversations, really build a vision for a brighter future together. Um, and it's also important to me, it's not unique, um, but I'm a, a mother of three little boys, two of which started school today, and just recognizing that I can make sure they have their new shoes and their glue sticks, but the, you know, making sure that they have the opportunity to have the future that I know that they're capable of, it's gonna take all of us. And um, it's just so inspiring to see so many people coming together and in this fight um, to build a better future. So thank you. Thank you so much, Mike, um, Sabrina. Um, well, so <laughs> is Mackenzie on the line? Yes, hi, thank you. Hey, so this is Mackenzie Barris and I am Deputy Director at Jobs with Justice and I live in Washington, DC. Um, and so uh, Jobs with Justice, we believe that all workers should have collective bargaining rights, employment security, and a good standard of living in an economy that works for everyone. Uh, we're also a national network. Uh, we have 34 local coalitions across the country who bring together labor, community, student, faith voices to build power for working people. And we are much newer, um, I want to admit that up front, to thinking about climate work and, and to doing climate work at either a local or a national level. But I think we really understand that at this moment, Moment, it's not possible to think about what a just economy looks like without taking into account the real threat that climate change poses to working people all over the world. So at a local and a national level, you know, we're really just starting to think about what would it take and what would it look like to have an economy where working people have real power in their workplaces as well as in their communities and where are their intersections of that um, intersections with that on the economy that would also um, create healthy communities um, and uh, a livable planet for everybody. Um, so, you know, we think in there, right, there's, you know, work that promotes a dignified life, work that promotes healthy communities, um, and making sure that that work is also family sustaining, safe, and accessed equally by everybody. 
Uh, we also have affiliates in New York, Florida, and Northern California who have recently been in the front lines of climate change and climate disasters. And so they're really helping us to also think about what does it mean to protect working people from climate crises as they arise and what is just an equitable rebuilding look like after a crisis. Um, I think we're really excited um, to be a part of people's climate movement and proud that some of our affiliates in the Bay Area and Illinois have been taking leadership roles in, in, in planning for September 8th and thinking about what, what work looks like going forward. And we're really hoping that um, the September 8th Day of Action is a chance for more of our affiliates to be able to connect with groups locally who are working on climate change and to start to enter conversations and connect around where we see opportunities in the economy to advance an agenda agenda for climate jobs and justice. Um, for some of our coalitions, they're going to come to that work with a focus on um, a caring economy and, and what that means. Um, for others, there's a, a lot of transit work that we've been doing um, and a part of. Um, and for others, we want to see new manufacturing jobs that are, are cleaner and promote a healthy planet. Um, and I think there are a lot of places of intersection and whatever the starting point, um, we uh, want to be coming together with others and especially bringing our union partners into dialogue about what a truly just economy looks like. Um, so we very much believe that um, across many movements, we have common problems and common enemies, runaway inequality, corporate greed, attacks on our democracy, and that we can't begin to tackle any of these um, without a real shared analysis, as well as actually starting to find places where we are in action together and running campaigns that um, are intersectional um, and, uh, and, and benefit um, all of our communities fully. Um, so very um, uh, happy for the opportunity to be a part of this um, and to learn from all of the great work that's happening all over the country. Wonderful, thank you so much, Mackenzie and Sabrina. Um, so as you've heard, there's a lot happening across the nation in the lead up to the September 8th mobilization. And we also need to be mindful of the work that will continue afterwards as well. So we, we can continue strengthening our movement. And if so, if you're in the Bay Area in California, make sure to check out uh, the It Takes Root Solidarity to Solutions Week of Action. So that's Soul to Soul, S-O-L to S-O-L, the number two. Um, it's being hosted by our partners at Grassroots Global Justice Alliance, and that's a US-based alliance of grassroots groups working to build power through a multitude of issues. And you can search Soul to Soul on Facebook for the event page, and that'll have information about every day, um, every day of action in the description. Um, and we'll also be dropping a link into the chat box so that you can click on the event page through the chat box. There are a number of other activities happening um, before and during the, G the GCAS in the, the GCAS conference in the Bay Area. Um, and you can look, find those events at um, ca.riseforclimate.org backslash events. And so there, we'll also be dropping that link into the chat box as well so you can access it. Um, but whether you're in California or in another state, if you're really energized about C3 voter engagement, please make sure to RSVP in our voter volunteer call with Lindsay Crowder, who's PCM's organizing director. That call is happening on Wednesday, the 15th of August at 8 p.m. Eastern. And we're gonna be dropping a link to that call right now in the chat box so that you can follow up. Um, we'll also be sending all of these links in a follow-up email so that um, folks who, you know, so that everyone can access it. Um, so, now that you've heard all of the, oh, actually, so let's take um, some time for some questions now. Um, and again, feel free to write the questions in the chat box. So we'll just take a couple of uh, seconds for folks to write up any questions they may have. Um, and then I can read them out, some of them out so that we can answer them for the, the group. So let's see. Can I suggest a question, Diane? This is Annalisa again. Absolutely. Um, I just saw somebody type in, looks like Barbara. Do you have suggested follow-up actions for folks who are not in San Francisco? 
Um, I think this is a great question. And if Lindsay is around to answer it, I think that would be really great to talk a little bit about some follow-up actions. Lindsay, are you available? Yes, I am. Um, so following um, our September 8th RISE events, we are gonna be hosting um, a voter program kickoff call. Um, so we, as the National PCM Mark, will be um, coordinated a C3 voter program that we're gonna be running from now until the elections. And um, we're gonna have an RSVB call for that. I can drop a link in um, to our volunteer page. And um, that's gonna be a really exciting part of our work following the September 8th action. Um, and then I can follow up in the email with other ways for you to get involved in our volunteer and voter work as well. Thank you, Lindsay. So one other question that I'm seeing here are, what are the group's relationships with indigenous tribes? The city of Tacoma is built on Puyallup tribal lands and some of our strongest allies and collaborators are Puyallup water warriors does someone have an answer yeah that's a great question can i kick it off really quickly antonio from the national perspective and then pass it over to you if sure you great um so on our national partnership side we've been really really intentional about ensuring that our partners come from many sectors i saw a couple other questions about some other um, small businesses and energy work, um, all of these issues are really important and we really are doing our best to make sure that PCM nationally and locally in states um, is going to represent folks from various types of community groups, multi-issue organizations, faith communities, um, young people's organizations, uh, school institutions, environmental and traditional conservation organizations, environmental justice groups, and of course many indigenous organizations as well as indigenous communities as sometimes uh, there can be a difference there. Um, so nationally some of our key partners are the Indigenous Environmental Network. Um, we've been working a lot with again our, our, our partners and friends at Grassroots Global Justice Alliance who as well are working with many Native and Indigenous people um, who are, is hosting this Soul to Soul Week of Action. Um, we're really, really excited to support all of them in the work that they're developing, lifting up solutions that are coming from these communities. Um, and uh, I wanted to just, with that, pass it over to Antonio to speak a little bit more to that. Sure, thanks. Uh, what I was gonna say specifically in terms of the uh, San Francisco anchor action is that uh, the, the leadership uh, team that we have is, uh, has strong rep representation from uh, indigenous um, organizers and indigenous organizations here in the state, from uh, Indian people organizing for change to uh, the, the leadership from I don't know more SF Bay area uh, that have worked heavily on, um, uh, on, um, on uh, uh, fossil fuel extraction in native lands, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, uh, there's been strong leadership in, in planning this event. Not to mention also that the first contingent of the march is gonna be led by California native folks. So yeah, I mean, I think there's, there's been deep engagement and involvement with this, this action with, uh, with that community. Thank you. So we have time for one more question and um, that is how are you advertising your RISE events? Uh, events that are not near the Bay Area, especially reaching folks that don't normally do protest work? These are good questions. <laughs> Does uh, one of the panelists want to answer? <laughs> Maybe Micah, you want to answer that, especially with your Built Out Coalition? <laughs> Um, it's, you know, we're going to be, all of our partners will be sending out the word via our email list is um, a bit, but we're going to do our very best to reach beyond the choir, um, and get the word out far and wide and encourage everyone to share with all of their friends and hopefully get a really good turnout. We had, I don't know, over 8,000 people out in an absolute blizzard last year. <laughs> so I'm hoping we can, uh, we can repeat that. <laughs> But yeah, if folks have ideas, would love to hear more um, other folks' ideas if you want to share them on the chat to make sure that we are reaching out beyond all of our collective choirs. Yeah, I think that's uh, just to quickly add on to that, I, I definitely second that. It's very important. The question ask, asker that asked that, we again really are doing our best to ensure that our partnerships are non traditional 
that we're really building a movement that's multi-sector, uh, multi-perspective, uh, has a representation of all of the people that are living on our planet um, and all of the issues that we face collectively so we can truly have some strong solidarity. So um, use this as an opportunity. I think there's some folks uh, in, in one of the states that we talked about actually last week on our field call that's using the September 8th action as an opportunity to relationship build with organizations that they typically don't work with. So even thinking about ways to, again, use this as an opportunity to um, get to know some of the neighbors that may be working locally or regionally with you that you um, can maybe find some alignment around. We know that this work is super hard and it's super tough, um, but we are really, really excited to support you in that. Awesome. Thank you, Annalisa. Um, so and now that you've heard about all of the ways partners are building momentum, movement, and action, we need you all to commit to join us. So please watch the screen for the poll to pop up and choose from the following options. So for those of you who are on the phone, hang tight since there isn't a poll function for the phone yet. Um, but what we want to know is, what action will you commit to taking? And so you've got three options. Um, you will, one, RSVP now for a Rise for Climate um, Jobs and Justice Action near you on September 8th by visiting peoplesclimate.org or riseforclimate.org. If you're in California, you'll find all of the info at, rise, at ca.riseforclimate.org. The second option, invite your friends and share why are you rising using the hashtags hashtag rise for climate and hashtag why we rise on social media. The third option is you sign up to be a PCM storyteller and the link will be there. Um, the fourth option, text rise or rise CA to 83224 to get updates and calls to action. The fifth is pledge to be a climate voter volunteer and attend a training. Um, and you can sign up for the training at peoplesclimate.org backslash volunteer. And so that link will be ready for you all. Um, so let's see what everyone should take a second to vote. What are we, what are we all going to be doing? I know I'm definitely going to be inviting all of my friends and family to actions in the many states that I call home. <laughs> All right, let's see. So um, I'm gonna ask Emily, can you read out some of the results? So we can see what people are committing to. Yes. Um, We've got 83% of people are ready to RSVP. Um, we've got 56%, um, almost 100 folks who are ready to invite their friends. We've got a bunch of people, looks like tons of people are texting RISE. We've got a, a very dedicated group of 15 who are committed to do all of the above. So thank Ooh. you all. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's awesome. Thank you all so much. Yes, thank you all so much. And everyone who ha has access to the chat box, please share out other ways that you're planning to take action. We want to hear from everyone. We're super excited about this event. Um, and I think it's going to be super powerful. So with that, I'm going to pass it off to Annalisa to do some last minute sort of final reminders. Thanks, Diane, and thanks, Emily. Um, a round of applause digitally for Emily from 350.org for <laughs> running all the back-end tech for this call, for all the panelists, and for all of you. Thank you all so much. Um, and thank you, Emily, very much for, for supporting us with all of that. Um, I wanted to just quickly underscore a couple of things that we heard tonight. Um, again, don't forget to take action. Um, as many of you pledge to do so, now it's formal, you gotta go do it. Um, go to peoplesclimate.org. If you go to the Take Action section on our website, there's a map of actions that are happening across the nation and across the globe. Um, if you type in your zip code, you can RSV to the action near you and we're gonna challenge you to even go a step further and invite five of your friends. 
send that link, text them, Instagram, DM them, Facebook message them, tweet them, like literally pick out your five folks and, and directly invite them. Even though we got all this great tech, we still have to do that one-to-one -one work. Um, Lindsay's going to drop that chat into, I'm sorry, that link into the chat box of where to go check that out. Um, you can also go check out uh, some of our other aspects on our website. We've been we've been working really, really hard to get this website up and functional. Um, congrats to the digital team for doing all that work. Um, and in particular, Alexis, who's our distributed organizer, who's also been developing our digital hubs. You can check that out under our work, um, the tab that says our work. And if you look, you can join you can join a hub or you can create a hub. And there's also so um, an FAQ sheet in case you're curious about what is even a digital hub. Um, but if you're looking for ways to connect um, offline, I'm sorry, as, as far as like not in the streets, but online, offline, go ahead and go to the digital hubs. And Lindsay's going to go ahead and drop that uh, link into the chat box as well. Can give you um, some other aspects around art, organizing toolkits, um, ways to, to build the buzz again on social media or on your email, wherever you is your chosen technological tool. Um, you can go to the resources tab and all of that is linked there. Right now we have um, a large set of, of these graphics and images and sample text in English. Um, we have some in Chinese as well and we have some stuff in Spanish as well. Um, so if anybody is interested in doing any other translation for other languages, we'll more than happily take you up on that. Um, but you can check out the resources there. I also wanted to quickly shout out all the folks in states that have primary elections that are coming up before the end of this month. Because again, I think when we're thinking about rising for climate jobs and justice, we also cannot ignore the aspect of civic engagement as it refers to nonpartisan C3 work, which means we got to get out there. We got to exercise our right to vote. Um, we have to do what we can to, to make sure that our voices are being heard at the ballot box and beyond. So shouts out to Minnesota, Connecticut, Vermont, Wisconsin, Arkansas, Wyoming, Arizona, and Florida. I believe those are all the states that have primary elections. Hats off to all of y'all that are working on those um, campaigns and make sure you all get out and vote. And if you are an event host or if you're a main partner leading an action, we want to invite you in particular to join our field call, our national field call that's happening on the 22nd of August. It's a Wednesday. It'll be at 4 p.m. Eastern. It'll be on Zoom as well. Um, so you can get to see some of the other folks from across the nation beyond just our folks that were on our call tonight that are developing these actions um, and are troubleshooting and brainstorming and getting powerful together. So we can't wait to see you then. I also wanted to, before we close out, with a really awesome song that I'm super excited for y'all to hear um, from one of our other partners out in California, um, who's also an organizer with Green Faith and a director of Thrive Choir, Kyle. Um, I just wanted to quickly, again, shout out all the organizations that that have been a part of this work. I think again, um, I wanna lift up that it's, it's, not, it's not easy. It's not easy to have movement alignment. It's not easy to um, go beyond the choir as we were talking about earlier. Funnily enough, we're gonna have a choir performance right after this, but um, we, it's, not, it's, not, um, it's not easy work. And so I really, really give a lot of kudos. I give a lot of um, respect and love to you all for doing the hard work of organizing your communities, organizing other people, building actions, doing logistics, um, chasing people, calling them, texting them, emailing them, waiting for them to get back to you and say what they're going to do with you. It's, it's tough work. So I, I really give um, all, all the credit and kudos to you all on the ground for making this happen. Um, never give up. Stay persistent. It's worth it. We need you. We need each other if we're going to win. I think many of our folks tonight have really underscored that. Um, so let's keep making this movement as beautiful, as vibrant, and as exciting as possible. Um, we got to bring some more people into this work, um, young, old, and in between. Um, so with that, I'm going to pass it over to Kyle, who's going to close us out, hopefully give you a little energy for being on this long call with us. Uh, Kyle, I'll, I'll let you take it away. Thanks, y'all. Super inspired to be on the call with everybody. Just wanted to make a quick plug for... Um, our faith effort here for the California March. Uh, you can go to see it at riseforclimate.org faith if you are in California or know of a faith group. And if you're from out 
outside of California, I'm also happy to connect you with our folks at Green Faith um, to do some faith mobilization. And if you're part of a choir, uh, there's a lot of ways to plug in music here in uh, California. Bands, choirs are going to be accepted to make this march the most musical and epic, beautifully sonic march that you've ever been to. Uh, so feel free to reach out to me, uh, Kyle at greenfaith.org. Here's the song. You can get out your little voice memo recorders. We're going to be sending this song out to all of uh, the folks uh, uh, marching in California so that we can learn it in advance. Uh, it's one that I wrote in collaboration with uh, Lou from the Peace Poets based in Brooklyn, who's going to be out here for the march. It goes like this. We rise before the seas. We rise as tall as trees. We rise not just for you and me, but for all humanity we rise before the seas we rise as tall as trees we rise not just for you and me but for all humanity we rise rise for liberation we rise rise for all creation we rise rise for liberation we rise rise for all creation we rise before the seas we rise as tall as trees we rise not just for you and me but for all humanity we rise before the seas we rise as tall as trees we rise not just for you and me but for all humanity we rise rise for liberation we rise rise for all creation we rise rise for liberation we rise rise for all creation sing with me this last time here we go one two one, two, three. We rise before the seas. We rise as tall as trees. We rise not just for you and me, but for all humanity. We rise before the seas. We rise as tall as trees. We rise not just for you and me, but for all humanity. We rise, rise for liberation. We rise, rise for all creation. We rise, rise for liberation. We rise, rise for all creation. Hey! hey. Wow. I know it's going to be bumping. So check, <laughs> check out the Thrive Choir, Thrive Street Choir. We're going to be singing at the march. Thanks, y'all. Thank you so much, Kyle. I was just Beautiful. For all those that were not on the on the video, folks are clapping even in the video screen. So thanks again, Kyle. All right. Well, uh, looks like we have lots of requests to to hear uh, live bands and get some music in the streets on your actions. Uh, I hope this gives you all a little bit of inspiration for your final last four weeks. Two weeks, two and a half weeks before our September, we'll be sending all of this info in a follow-up email. So please do reply to us there. If you don't get the answer in the follow-up email, we'll send it out tomorrow. Um, you can again check us out on hashtag Why We Rise, Rise for Climate. Please feel free to follow and search and like and everything else. Support all the many organizations that you see on the screen tonight and beyond. Um, again, thank you to all the partners that have been on the call tonight. We really appreciate having you. Thank you to Diane for facilitating and being an amazing host. Um, thanks to Kyle for closing us out. Thanks everybody for being on the call. Have a great night. Thank you. Take care.